Hello Grace, it's really lovely to have you here today. Um, we're here to talk about older women in beauty which is the subject of a new report which is coming out in the new year and um, I wanted to speak to Grace because I think she's doing something really interesting in terms of um, her, the brand that she uh, founded, Studio 10, which I'm not sure if it's the only makeup brand for older women but it's certainly I get the impression from all the research that I've done that it's the only one doing certain things so mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you first of all what gave you the idea for Studio 10? Well my background's in beauty and what I find really interesting about beauty is anti-aging as a category it's one of the fastest growing areas in beauty so there's you know anti-aging skincare at home treatments, I was reading about anti-aging hair care to make your hair feel younger. Mm. Um, and in makeup, cosmetics, which I love as a medium because it's so transformational, mm. there are lots of products available on the marketplace or in the marketplace that have anti-aging ingredients in them. And that's pretty much where it stops. And for me, what I felt was really missing was a range of makeup specifically aimed, designed for women as they age. So 35, 45, 50 plus. And what's interesting, if you start to look at the products that are available, um, and you start to look at the texture, the finish, the ingredients, different parts, I've worked with an amazing dermatologist to understand what happens to the skin as it ages. And then with makeup, how you can use makeup to cover, conceal the signs of ageing, whether it be enlarged pores, helping to blur fine lines, loss of pigmentation, age spots, mm. adding definition. So I would say there is not, and we are the first makeup brand aimed at women as they age. Well, so when you look at makeup brands, they tend to have you know, many SKUs, don't they? Yeah. So I think that Studio 10 doesn't go for that approach, does it? Well, the reason why makeup brands have a lot of skews is because it's colour. So you've got mm. different, you know, colour eyeshadows and you cover the whole spectrum and different, you know, skin tones and fashions and... And I didn't want to play in that field because the area that I was really interested in are... Um, or the area I was really interested in is the signs of ageing. So how can you use makeup to correct, to cover, to conceal the problem solvers, quick fixes mm. to help you look younger, to enhance your beauty, and quick, fast tricks of the trade. So how do you get this across in terms of, you know, to the consumer? What, what, what tools and tactics do you use to, to get your message over? Okay, well the product range is really tight. It's literally 12 products. And it's not about colour, and it's not about fashion. It's not about celebrity, it's about, someone said, Spanx for the face. Oh, brilliant. So it's using, that. you know, if you walk, bought a beautiful dress, mm. it's never going to look a million dollars if you don't have the right body con underwear. Mm. So Spanx for the face is really what Studio 10 is about. So with Studio 10, how does it differ from other makeup brands on the market? Because there's so much out there. And, and also, how do you get that message across to, to the consumer? Well, I think we're quite unique in that, and I almost say we're not a makeup, we're not a colour brand. Really what we're about is using the aesthetic of makeup mm. to correct, to cover, to conceal the signs of ageing and add back the pigment that you lose. So it's very much creating the foundation, it's the scaffolding, the structure mm. of a younger face. And then you can go on and use any colour products that you have or colours that you like, which is more about your own sort of mm. expression. So, so it's so the step before... Using other, other products as well. Yeah, so absolutely. So not just saying, right, it's got to be just all about Studio 10, but recognising the fact that women do mix and match anyway. Yeah, and, and women to... like different colours. You've got a beautiful blue eyeliner, mm. I wear brown. But mm. makeup's never going to look fantastic on ageing skin if you haven't got the structure in place. So it's the scaffolding, it's the structure. Mm. And then you add your colour. So really it's making colour look better. And it's quite strange to have a makeup brand and say, well, actually, I'm not really a colour brand. Mm. And as someone called it, um, said, it, you know, it's Spanx for the face. And I just thought that absolutely mm. summed up what Studio 10 is yeah. and what yeah. it does. And then in terms of marketing, um, because we're a niche brand, we target a niche segment. And we talk to women. What I'm really interested in is how women feel about 
ageing from mm -hmm. their late 30s to their 40s to the 50s to the 60s all the way through to 70s mm -hmm. and women's relationship with ageing is different of course, um, yeah. so we are very specific we talk only to them even though we've got lots of younger fans of the brand it's not our target so mm -hmm. I'd say we're very consistent um, we bring in other insights that we know about that audience and one thing that comes out all the time is um, well I do my makeup in the way I did 20 years ago mm -hmm. well your makeup, your face changes. Mm. So there are new techniques, there's more tricks to the trade that you need. So there's a lot of education mm. that comes with Studio 10. Or other women say, I don't really feel confident around makeup, or I don't need it, or mm. it takes too long. So why, why do you think this is? Is it because of what traditionally has not been happening in the industry in terms of the brands are not speaking to them in a way that or maybe they're not, they haven't got the right products or they haven't got the right environment in which they're selling the products. How, I think, how do you see it? Okay, so I think there's two sides to it. One is, I think the products are there. There's a lot of anti-aging um, skincare, hair products. So there's a lot of anti-aging products out there and there are anti-aging um, makeup products. There isn't a dedicated brand in, which, in the way that we are. So I think there's two sides of that coin. One is there are lots of products aimed at women as they age, lots of anti-aging skincare, hair care, at home treatments, but I think the breakdown is in the marketing. So I mean I love going through all the glossy magazines mm. and there's great innovation, high tech skincare anti-aging products and then the advert has a model who's 20 or 25 yeah. or you know if they want to have a more sophisticated you know aged model she might be in her early 30s mm. so and I think that's they use a lot of um, airbrushing don't they as well oh, yeah which is the which other is side yeah. so which is unrealistic un yeah, it's unbelievable for, for, yeah. for consumers yeah and I think consumers are much more savvy mm. um, and they can see through it mm. doesn't oh, it yeah. for me I think there's for me personally I there's a there's a lack of integrity um, at the same time, marketing needs to be aspirational, mm. so I think you can blend the two. Mm. But I certainly think the products are there, I think mm. the marketing, there isn't that consistency. Mm. Well, as a niche brand, you have opportunities to do things perhaps slightly differently to the bigger brands. I mean, you do quite a lot of um, online stuff, don't you, with videos and educational videos. How does that work? Well, part of it is because of the range of these professional, these pro tricks of the trade, um, and working on the premise that very few women feel confident, are still quite intimidated mm. by makeup. So we wanted to show and teach women how to use makeup to help them look younger mm. um, and also teach them how to do their makeup like a professional because we all love professional tricks of the trades mm. and fixes and problem mm. solvers. So video education is really, really important to us mm. and video is a great medium. Mm. And makeup is so visual, which is why, you know, we partner and do a lot with QVC because it's visual. You've been, I mean Studio 10 has been around now, is it, is it a year? Is no. it, or is it, how long has it been on the market? We launched with Cult Beauty in March this oh, year. Oh really? I mean we well, have not. Been a lot longer than that, no, obviously it was doing very well. <laughs> we've, do you know what, I really feel we've captured the imagination of the beauty industry mm. and I can see it through the response we've had from customers. I mean it's just an amazing response. So in other words you're saying that there's a real gap. There is the definitely, market. definitely a real yeah. gap mm. and you can see it in terms of you know the conversations I have with women all the time even mm. down to um, the ingredients we use for instance we're not doing a black eyeliner because we feel black's quite heavy mm. um, and harsh as you age. So we've got a very dark chocolate brown and a very dark, beautiful pewter, which adds the definition. Mm -hmm. And the amount of women who have said, that's so true, I'm so glad I've not been able yeah. to find a really gorgeous yeah. brown eyeliner that doesn't have glitter in it, that's not metallic. Absolutely, yeah. So there's, there's, so much, there's, so, there's such a trend at the moment for eyeliners. And I just, was just reading yesterday in one of the magazines, they were talking about eyeliners and they were all thick black Eyeliners and of course the models they used were, you know, thirty and under. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 an endemics kind of problem, really, isn't it? Um, and I think because we really focus on that audience, we know 
what looks good, what works, mm. what's transforming. And the other thing that we've done, going back to the eyeliner, is the reason why you would use eyeliner in as you age is to add definition. Yeah. So you're never going to get makeup to conceal and cover lines. Mm. It's, it's an impossible. You can like, blur them, you can mm. be distracted from them. So, but you do create definition. Definition mm. as you age becomes really, really mm. important. Mm. And you lose definition, you lose mm. colour, you lose shape, you lose... Mm. So mm. defining the eye, the quickest thing to do is to use an eyeliner mm. and a mascara. Mm. So don't want to do black because it, it, it makes eyes look much more heavy and sunken and that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. So we've got a dark grey and a dark chocolate brown mm. which is lovely flattering mm. definition. Um, no glitter, it's not metallic, it's just deep pigmented. Mm. But on the other end, where you're adding definition, you need to lift and brighten. So we've got a brightening pencil on the other end, mm. which is a flesh, almost skin colour, mm. which takes away any redness, makes the eye pop, um, and just brightens it. So everything we do is about using makeup, the aesthetic of makeup, yeah. mm. um, to give you a, a younger looking yeah. face. You've recently brought out some lip products, haven't you? Yeah. So how, do, how what, what's so special about those? Well, there's two things. Um, and we always start with the signs of ageing. So mm. the lip area is, you know, one of the telltale yeah. signs yeah. of yeah. ageing. So um, fine lines, which means mm. if you're wearing lipsticks or lip glosses, it starts bleeding. You lose shape, you lose definition. I've got age spots around my lips. Mm. So quick fix for that is our uh, double-ended lip liner, mm -hmm. which actually creates a fuller, plumper, defined lip. And then I wanted to add in colour and pigment. Mm. So um, generally, ageing skin is much drier, lips are much drier. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful about the, the um, ingredients and the texture of products and how it interacts with ageing skin. So with the lipstick, I didn't want anything that was dry. I wanted a really nourishing, nourishing mm. lip product. Um, I wanted to move away from gloss. I felt gloss was more about that finish. So that's more mm. about, um, you know, the finished look. This is more about adding back what you, lo you, you mm. lose mm. as you age. Mm. So it's pigment, and I wanted it to be long, long lasting. Because the other thing yeah. about women and makeup is, you know, how many of us really have time yeah. to, A, do our makeup and keep... You know, we're always busy on the on the run, so to touch. But, but also, if you don't have the definition in, in in your eyes and your lips, you don't want products that are going to sort of vanish. No, absolutely. You, know, you look in the mirror and you realise actually you've been walking around have, without lipstick. You yeah. thought it, you you know, still on. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So this yeah. is a long lasting liquid lipstick, mm. um, and a lot of long last products. And it's a demi matte, so it's not too pearly, it's not too shiny, but it's not too matte. Matte doesn't work on aging skin either. So mm. getting the right finish yeah. is absolutely key, and we work at that micro level mm. on mm. every single product, mm. um, and. They are beautiful to wear, they're very, very light, and we've literally got three shades. So they're shades that are flattering, mm. that add um, a pop, a mm. youthful pop, yeah. but aren't a fashion colour. Mm. 